Okay. We are in module six, making our way through the ONS section. Uh, this is memory optimization. This will actually uh, be pretty short. It's only two lessons. So the first one is the review, and then the second one will be monitoring the activities. A virtual machine has different levels of memory. You have the guest virtual memory, the virtual machine's own swap file within the its virtual drive. You have the physical memory, which has been allocated from the host. And then you have the actual host physical memory. And all of this can be in different places relative to each other. So in the host physical memory, we could have a section of memory that, that is slated currently being used by the guest's virtual memory that is linked to the physical linked up or uh, vice versa. Applications, just like with all uh, applications, they always start with no memory during execution they'll start using memory as needed. That memory then has to get allocated either in the swap or the physical memory of the system. When a virtual machine starts, it actually has no physical memory attached to it. And during its run, it's actually attached on demand. This is why it's possible to over provision for memory because it's always on demand. The guest physical memory can be reclaimed uh, it, depending on how it's set up. Sometimes it's, if the hypervisor, for example, is not aware, then it's not possible that, hey, this section is free, so we can dedicate it to somewhere else. Uh, but it is, you know, we can move memory around as needed. But any memory that is already uh, reclaimed within the guest can't necessarily be taken out by the hypervisor. So I did mention overcommitment. The hypervisor uh, does this so that uh, we can we can run more VMs than we actually have ran. But in you know in truth, um, a lot of VMs or a lot of operating systems don't necessarily use the full length and breadth of their RAM. You know any process that isn't running immediately will be suspended, moved to the virtual. Uh, you know, to the virtual page files. So that way it doesn't take up physical memory. In that sense, VMware doesn't necessarily have to worry about it getting overcommitted because it knows the, the, the guests themselves are also managing their own memory. So there are different terminologies when it comes to memory, you have the memory size, the total amount of memory presented to a guest OS. You have the free memory, uh, which is unassigned. The allocated memory assigned to application and the operating system. Within that, we have the active memory being used and the idle memory that's not being used. This is how VMware can reclaim memory on the fly. It can do it with transparent page sharing. It can do it with ballooning, memory compression, host swap cache, and host level swapping. So with tra transparent page sharing, the content, it's content based, and it moves memory with minimal overhead 
by writing memory, writing common memory once and then reusing that over and over. So we have our page content. We have a function to hash that so that we keep that and that can be accessed by different VMs all the time. InterVM transparent page sharing or TPS is actually disabled by default. And it's uh, restricted to intra VM sharing. Uh, for example, these three, we have three VMs running. We have our host memory. Uh, the page sharing across the three is disabled. So they can't, they can't jump on one another. All modern hardware have memory management units that perform things like management protection, cache control. Uh, this, this enables the address spacing within memory and uh, prevents things like a buffer overflow between VMs. It does work uh, with and without NUMA, the non-uniform memory access. You know, if, if the system has NUMA, then that page can have a local copy. The page of memory can have its own uh, within its own node. So when VMs use shared pages, they won't access uh, memory remote and incur any latency because they're not accessing a remote. So if a VM is sitting within this node, uh, it doesn't need to call out to this node and have some latency between the two. Uh, the default behavior for the transparent page sharing on intra VM memory, it'll scan and collapse any small pages that are identical uh, within a virtual machine and any zero page, any zero filled pages will be the primary focus. So if there is a page that is completely empty, it'll reclaim that. And then any that look similar that have identical content will be compressed together, thereby uh, minimizing the amount of use in memory. So in order to enable this, we got to go into the, into the host settings. And here are the changes that you can make and what each setting means. Now, if your host setting is zero, then it's inter VM. If it's one, then it's inter VM for all VMs is default. And if it's two, then there's no inter VM uh, for all as default. Ballooning uh, collaborates the virtual machine to reclaim pages that are considered least valuable by the guest OS. The command line application VM memctl is the only way to reclaim unused memory. Uh, with ballooning, the goal is to make the guest OS aware of low memory status so that the guest operating system can free some of it. It'll select free or idle virtual machine memory. Uh, but if it, if it asks to reclaim too much, it might actually start reclaiming active memory uh, while when it does this. So you definitely don't want it to reclaim active memory. You definitely want it to go after free or idle to send off to swap. A memory compression. ESXi will store pages in a compressed cache in the host physical memory. And if it can't be compressed, then the page will be swapped out instead. 
So ESXi will do its job of minimizing the use of memory. And if it sees that it can't compress it, then it'll just take it into its own slot for now. Uh, again, it'll do host level swapping, ballooning and memory compression. Uh, it, may, it may be insufficient depending on just the load that you give the system. A host level swapping will randomly select guest physical memory to reclaim. That can be dangerous because it'll get, it could get active memory. And again, you don't want to get active memory you want to go for the free or idle. So here's a quick little activity, which is it's a matching game. And the answer is that. The option mem min free PCT is the amount of memory a VM kernel should keep free. And you can slide it based on the amount of memory installed on the host. Uh, so if we want to keep some memory free no matter what, we would adjust this to meet our needs and, and keep some memory free on the host. So then if we reach that point, then it'll start moving things to swap, compressing, and doing all that kind of stuff. You have criteria for reclamation from high to low. When memory pressure increases, or basically when you're losing memory, uh, thresholds can be used to take actions depending on where it stands. So you could have it take an action when uh, you have a hard memory state or soft or clear. When free memory increases, you can have the reverse effect of what it can do. That is the end of lesson one. We are halfway across. Monitoring memory activity will be very similar to others using ESX Top, the, the VMware version of Top or HTOP. Of course, the guest or host memory might appear different from what is seen in the operating system since we can adjust on the fly what happens to the guest. And the host memory usage is always relative uh, priority to the, all the other guests. So if you've seen in the settings, uh, when you look at like the charts and reports and whatnot, you see consumed host memory is typically higher than the active guest memory because consumed is the highest amount of memory used by the guest. As long as it's not commit over committed, this combo is always good. Consumed host memory can be less or equal to active guest memory uh, if it doesn't completely reside in the host physical memory or it's a combination uh, points or this combo points to a potential performance degradation. You normally wanna see that consumed memory is higher than active, not the other way around. Just like uh, last module using ESX top, you can see a number of things to dive into for uh, monitoring memory usage. You know, telling you uh, the usage, telling you the state that it's in. You can hit F to display the fields and J to enter the memory. You can watch up any ballooning activity, for example, the max balloon per, per virtual machine, 
uh, target physical memory target to reclaim, active memory per each VM, and the configured memory per each VM. We can also see swap targets. Now to see where ballooning is being used and where swapping is being used. We can also see memory compression. You can enable that with F and Q to see how much memory is being compressed. We can also see things like host cache swapping. So we'll know when the host is doing this kind of swapping on the guests. In this stream, by entering F and K, we can see the swap uh, activity and all the fields that relate to swapping, like how much swap space is currently used, the target, the reads per second, and the writes per second, along with the total memory swap rate of all the VMs on the host. You can do C and V in order to display just the VMs and the percentage of time that a VM has waited for swap activity. If you start seeing host level swapping, that's because your host memory is either being overcommitted or we're using our VMs are memory intensive. And the configuration is greater than the amount of host physical memory available. So when you start seeing that, that is a cause of concern. When you start seeing host level swapping, you could reduce the level of memory commitment with vSphere vMotion. Uh, make sure that the balloon driver is installed. You could add memory to the host, to the physical host. You could reduce memory reservations and use resource controls to dedicate memory to critical virtual machines. Because again, you don't want overcommitment and you don't want host level swapping to occur. Another matching. In ESX top, you would get these items. What do they mean? And the answer is that. Again, reduce the level of memory overcommitment by adding physical memory if you can. Reduce the number of VMs on each host and uh, add the hosts into a DRS cluster so that they share memory with one another. A best practice is to keep the balloon driver enabled so that it does it on its own within the VM and not at the host level. Uh, if you're getting this kind of stuff, again, uh, reevaluate your reservations if you have a reservation set. Uh, if you can't reduce your reservation, then maybe start thinking about uh, memory overcommitment, just reducing it overall. Because you only have so much memory, you have to be efficient with it. You could use memory reservations to prevent critical VMs from swapping. But again, you wanna be conservative with these. You wanna use this more of a last resort because just by fixing the criticals, you might cause swapping on other VMs and your problem just moved from one system to another and you didn't really resolve it overall.
he will have a lab to do some of this stuff on uh, NetLab. Where you'll again work with ESX top and check out some memory stats and whatnot. And then when you do the lab, you'll have some questions to answer as always. And that is actually the end of this little module. These modules are not that long because they're, they're all just uh, quick optimizing tips. Any questions? I see no questions. So I will end the stream.